Hi, I'm Christopher Mitchell, author of Using the TI-84 Plus Second Edition, and welcome back to this video series, Using the TI-84 Plus CE. In part one, you learned how you could use your TI-84 Plus CE calculator for basic math, including arithmetic, square roots, trigonometry, and more. In this second edition, you'll learn how to use your calculator for basic graphing in function mode. Let's get started with your very first graph. To access the graph tools on your TI-84 Plus CE, or indeed any TI-84 Plus family calculator, you use the five keys at the very top of the keyboard. The Y equals key takes you to a menu where you can enter equations to graph. Window lets you change the bounds of the screen. Zoom lets you zoom in and out on graphs as well as reset to a standard zoom setting. Trace lets you examine points along a graph. And the graph key simply shows you a graph of all of the equations that you've entered. We'll start by pressing y equals, which brings us to a screen full of y equals prompts. Each of these allows us to enter a different equation to graph. If you don't see y1, y2, y3, etc. on your y equals screen, try pressing mode, going down to function, and making sure that function is in white text on a black background, meaning that it's enabled. If one of the other options, like parametric, polar, or sequential, is highlighted, Function will appear black on a white background, meaning it is not enabled. Move your cursor over to function and press enter to choose that option, then return to y equals. Now we can enter our very first equation. Let's start with the very simple y equals x. I've gotten the x variable by pressing the x t theta n key directly under mode. Regardless of which mode I am in, pressing the x t theta n key will type the independent variable for that particular graphing mode. In function mode, that is x. Now let's try graphing this equation. We can just press graph, and the calculator will graph the line. You can see it's drawn a blue line going through the origin with a slope that looks to be about 1, as we'd expect from the line y equals x. We can make sure by examining the points on the graph by pressing trace. Trace shows a flashing cursor on the line, as well as the x and y coordinates of the cursor at the bottom of the screen. If we press the left and right arrow keys, you can see that the cursor moves along the line, and the x and y coordinates shown at the bottom of the screen are updated to show the current coordinates of the cursor. If you were to enter a second equation, you could use the up and down arrows to switch between the graphs you had graphed and view the coordinates of points on each line. In fact, let's try entering another equation now. We'll go down to y2 and enter another equation. This time, let's try a parabola. So we can do x squared. Squared is the x squared key over here. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 1. Note that each time to enter x, I press the x t theta n key. And for the remaining characters, I simply press the keys that you'd expect. So 3 plus 1 and so on. Now, if I press graph again, the calculator will draw the second line that we've requested, a parabola. Interesting. It looks like these two graphs actually intersect at a point. We can find out that point of intersection using the Calculate tools on your calculator. Calculate allows you to examine different characteristics of a graph, including the value at a point, where it crosses the x-axis, or the zeros, minimums and maximums, intersections with other graphs, and the derivative at a point, or the slope, and the area under the curve from one bound to another bound, or the integral. To find the intersection of these two lines, let's move the cursor down to intersect and press enter. The calculator will ask us which two graphed functions we want to find the intersection of. We only have two functions graphed, so notice we're on the blue line. It's asking if that's the first curve. We'll do enter for yes. It's asking for the second curve. Now we're on the red parabola. Press enter again for yes. And now it asks for a guess. So all we need to do is move the remaining cursor here to roughly where we think the point of intersection is and press enter. The calculator will think for a second and come up with an approximation of what it thinks the point of intersection is. What this actually means is the point x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1 is where they intersect, and the calculator has indeed approximated. One of the things we can do is change the format of the graph. So if we press second and then zoom, which has format written in blue above it, we'll get a bunch of options for how we can format the graph. We can display graph coordinates in rectangular or polar form. We can turn coordinate display on and off. 
We can even display a grid behind the graph. Let's try displaying a line grid. So this will display a grid of lines behind the graph. And we'll leave the grid color at medium gray, although we could change it to darker grays or even to other colors. So medium gray for now. Axes, let's make green axes just for fun. And we can leave the background off for now. We could use one of the many images that your calculator includes for background if we wanted to try graphing against those backgrounds or finding equations of objects and images. If we press graph again, you'll see that our changes have been applied. We'll have a grid of green line of gray lines, excuse me, and we'll have green axes. So there's our grid in the background. Uh, the grid corresponds to the tick marks on the axes, so each of those boxes is actually just one by one. We can change this by adjusting the window. Now, remember, the point of intersection there was negative 1, negative 1. So let's try focusing on that area around the point of intersection. If we press Window, we have the opportunity to set the minimum and maximum x, the minimum and maximum y, and the distance between the tick marks x scale and y scale on the x and y axes. So if we want to focus on the point x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1, let's try setting x min to negative 3 and x max to 1. This will be an area 4 units wide around the point in x. And then we'll set the y bounds to the same. That'll also be, so now we'll have 4 units wide and 4 units tall. And let's set our y scale to 0.5. And there we go. So we can see that the point of intersection is right here at negative 1, negative 1. We can see that the y-axis is here, the x-axis is here. And because we have set our y scale to 0.5, but left our x scale at, 0 .5, at uh, 1, that each of these is 1, and each of these is 0 0.5. We can also zoom. Let's say we wanted to zoom out from here. We can just move the cursor down to zoom out in the zoom menu, accessed by the zoom key, and press Enter. The calculator will ask us what we want the center of the zoom to be. We're at the very center of the screen, x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1. So let's press Enter to confirm that we want to zoom out. The calculator will zoom out, in this case by a factor of 4, actually. And now we see a much zoomed out view of this graph. Another thing we can do is reset to the default zoom, the zoom called zoom standard that the calculator always starts with, where x, equal, x min equals negative 10, x max equals 10, y min equals negative 10, and y max equals 10. So we'll go down to zoom standard in the zoom menu and press enter. The calculator resets the standard zoom coordinates that I just mentioned and redraws the graphs. Before we end, let me talk about a few troubleshooting tips. If you wanted to graph a function, but for some reason you had accidentally turned on one of these plots at the top of the screen, when you press graph, you might find that you get an invalid dimension error. What this means is that you accidentally instructed the calculator to display a statistics plot, but you happen to find any list that contain data for the calculator to display. All you need to do is fix this. To fix this is to move the cursor up to plot one, plot two, or plot three, whichever one or ones is white text on a black background, and press enter to disable it. All three of them will then be black text on a white background, indicating that they're disabled, and you'll once again be able to graph. If you ever want to interrupt graphing in the middle, by the way, you can press the on key and the calculator will just stop. Other tools you might find useful are the table in second graph, which shows a list of x coordinates and the y coordinates of each of the points in the graphs that you have displayed, as well as the style options for changing the styles of lines. If you move the cursor all the way to the left in the y equals menu and press enter, you have the option to change line colors or change the line type. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll pick up a copy of Using the TI-84 Plus Second Edition. It contains a lot more information about graphing than this video provided. It walks you through graphing in a nutshell, setting your calculator function mode, Entering your first equation, just as we did in this video, putting it into the y equals menu, displaying a graph, how to change the style of the graph. In addition, it'll walk you th through some examples. Like, for example, if you throw a ball into the air, 
how do you compute how long the ball is in the air and how far it travels? It'll show you how to change the window. It'll show you how to trace along a graph. You'll find an example about two trains that are moving fast towards each other, one of the classic examples in basic algebra, and how to find the point at which the trains meet. You'll find out how to manipulate graphs, how to scroll left, right, up, and down along graphs. You'll find out the different time, kinds of zooming that your calculator can do, including the many zoom functions that I did not mention. You'll find out how to change the format of the graph, which is really important. In uh, second zoom, there are a variety of different ways that you can format your graph, including turning axis labels on and off, uh, setting a grid behind the graph, turning the axes on and off, or setting them to different colors. You'll find out how to use the table, which is an important way to examine the value of a function at various points. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, I hope you'll visit chemitech.net. And again, I hope that using the TI-84 Plus is helpful to you. See you next time.